about you, but I am so excited to stand behind this sacred desk right here on the corner of 56th and Willing Avenue. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful to be here. I don't know what to do. So I'm going to get right to it. If you have your Bibles, can you meet me in the book of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19, King James Version. Luke 17, 11 through 19, King James Version. Luke 17, 11 through 19, King James Version. When you get there, say, come on with it. Come on with it. Come on with it. One said, hold up. We will leave no one behind. We'll wait for you. You ready, sis? And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God except for this stranger? And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Thank you, Lord God, for this blessing. Thank you, Lord God, for this passage. Thank you, Lord God, for all that you've done. Thank you for all the biblical examples and illustrations that you've given us. That we would be able to understand what it is that you have for us to do. We thank you for the opportunity to preach your gospel, to come together as saints. There are folks in this world that if they were to fellowship as a church, they would be slaughtered and killed. But you give us a chance to worship together on Sunday mornings, and for that we say thank you. Lord, please bless this presentation. Bring back to my remembrance those things that you and I have studied together. Take out any nervousness that I might have after not standing here for a month. And help me to focus on the task at hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning I would like to use as a theme how to be grateful. How to be grateful. But before I proceed, I would like to familiarize you with this disease called leprosy. The word leprosy comes from the Greek word lepus or lepra. It is a scale and an inverted continuous disease appearing in dry, thin, white, scurfy cell, scales or scabs. Either it's on the whole body or on part of it. It is usually attended with violent itching and often great pain. The eastern leprosy was of a distemper and the most loathsome kind. It was highly contagious and so much so that if you touched a garment that a leper had previously touched, you could possibly and probably contact leprosy. It would infiltrate your home if a leper came through your home, 
and you came back in that home later on that day, it's a strong possibility that you could contract leprosy. This disease was incurable by human means. Turn to your neighbor and said, humans couldn't cure this. <laughs> and let me drop this on you too in case I forget to tell you. It, it reminds me of sin. Humans can't cure that. The cure for leprosy was always attributed to and responsible by God. In other words, no man, no doctor, no pet medicine, no formula, no potion could cure leprosy. It was always attributed to God to cure leprosy. And it was God and God alone in his sovereign power as to who and when he would cure a person. Now that you understand what leprosy is, I would like to introduce my son. I believe that we all have something to be thankful for. The reasons why we are thankful, watch this, may be as different as the faces in this room. I'm gonna say that again. I said the reasons why we are thankful, I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface that with, are as different as the faces. If I was to ask uh, Sister King, what is she thankful for? She's going to have a different thankfulness than Sister Dillard. Say amen. amen. They could be twins. They could be Siamese twins, joined at the hip. And they would still have a different reason for being thankful. Now, even though we should be thankful every day, some days we are even more thankful than others. Say amen. amen. On Sundays, we should be thankful for more than just a football game or for a day of leisure and activities. Amen. So he ain't lying so far. He ain't lying so far. Do we agree that we all have something to be thankful for? Yes. yes, absolutely. Great. Now let me challenge you, my brothers and sisters, to the next level. Not only should we be thankful, we should also be more than thankful. We should be grateful. Amen. As I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me, my soul, I don't know about your soul, but my soul cries out, hallelujah, because it was who? Jesus that set me free. Most of, here, of us here today know that it was Jesus who set us free, and most of us here are thankful. However, are you grateful? As the songwriter says, when he wrote the song Grateful, performed by Hezekiah Walker and the Love Ship Fellowship Crusade, he said these words in that song. Turn the mic over there. does something for you, you're thankful. 
but it takes another level of appreciation to be great. And my challenge to all of us here today, with the sound of my voice, and those of you who are with you too, is that you look into yourself and say to yourself, is thankful enough? Ah. In this particular passage of scripture, I see five things. I see the ground, I see the gravity, I see the gravity, and I see the great, and I see the grace. I'll say it again. I see the grounds, I see the gravity, I see the gratitude, I see the gripe, and I see the grace. If we look together in verse 11, we will see the grounds. And it came to pass that as he went to Philadelphia, he had to pass through Woodland Avenue. It's right here. And as it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, he had to pass through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now, the reason why it is so important that you understand what Samaria is, Samaria, or where the Samaritans live, and the Jews considered the Samaritans, I, I might as well say, as dogs. The Jews considered Samaritans as dogs, beneath them, underprivileged, worthless, not anything to be accountable for, nothing. Just don't even, don't even have to speak to them. Don't look. They do not exist. They are non-existent. The Jews did not like the Samaritans, and because of that, the Samaritans did not like the Jews. The Jews thought as though they were the privileged ones. Ah, y'all don't see the relation here. That's all right, that's all right. It'll hit you on your way home. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. Now you need to understand that lepers were not allowed to congregate or be near people who were not lepers. They had to stay out of town. They had to live out of town. Uh, if they came in town, they had to have their whole face covered up only their eyes were allowed to be seen, and they must announce that they are there by saying, unclean, unclean, to let you know to spread out because a leper is intact. They couldn't live in normal housing. They had to live off the, outside the camp, and when they came into camp, whatever they touched, people would either throw out, get rid of, or never want to have anything to do with anything to do with a leper. Those were the grounds. Now these lepers were ten of them. They, they birds of a feather flock together. If I was a leper and it couldn't be around normal people, I would hang with other lepers. Wouldn't you? Amen. So they hanging together. Now watch this. Now here's the key. There's a Samaritan in the bunch that Jews don't deal with. But since we all jacked up and we all look like we're going to hell, ain't no sense of being prejudiced at this point. So we can put our differences aside because misery. Ah, y'all need to get that down. Let me tell you, y'all make me work hard today. Y'all gonna make me work hard today. Look here, misery loves comfort. Anybody who's miserable is looking for somebody else to be miserable with. So he ain't lying so far. That's why there's some people you can't even call and talk to because they're so miserable, they want to pull you into whatever it is they're miserating over. Ain't I'm right about? And that's why you got to be careful who you hang with and who you're talking to because they're going to keep on throwing miserable stuff your way so you can start looking at the eyes through their eyes and everything is miserable to you too. I got a couple friends in there, man, it, it don't matter, it don't matter. It don't matter, it don't matter, it don't matter. Whatever it is, it's, it's negative, it's going to come out negative. So they stood afar off because they recognized that lepers cannot come near regular people. Much less, now watch this, Felicia, much less a rabbi. Oh, God, you, you might get shot rolling up on a rabbi with, 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 with leprosy because 
Now you done messed him up, and he can't do his ministry for several days. He got to sit outside the camp, this, that, and the other. So you never roll up on a minister with leprosy. Not only do you see the ground, but let's take a look at the gravity, the, the, the weight of this thing, the, the gravity, the seriousness, the importance, the, the severity, the magnitude, the enormity of this issue, the gravity. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. Ah. And the Bible said they had, they lifted one, one word that said they lifted up with one voice. They were in harmony. They were all like in unison. Jesus, amen, master, have mercy on us. And you know, you know, like I told you earlier, uh, uh, if you look at this leprosy as sin, and, and you know that your job can't heal sin, you know that the doctor can't heal sin. I got news for you. Your pastor can't heal sin. The only person that can heal sin is Jesus Christ. And it's the same thing with this leprosy. The only person who can heal leprosy is Jesus Christ. Turn your name and say, so far he ain't lying. So far he ain't lying. And when he came, he saw them, and watch this, and he, and he lifted up their voices and said, Jesus have mercy on us. Now, that's, that's something we all have to do. We have to learn how to humble ourselves and take our situations to Jesus. Now, one of the reasons that we don't is because we know we have already taken it to him five times. <laughs> and we look at him as a human and say, he ain't going to hear me now. Because that's what humans do. You come at me with five times the same thing. After the fourth time, I'm done with your problem. You with me here? That, that's the Larry part. Now, the priest, pastor part of me is supposed to say, come on. You ain't done it again. Let us pray. Are you with me here? That's what I got to do. But the Larry and me said, this thing goes, so I'm sorry. But, but, but God, but God, but God, he, 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 he welcomes you. He don't have that Larry part. He just straight up, come on, man. I know, I already knew you were going to do it again. You know what I mean? He already ready for you. You know, you come scared, of, you know. But, but, but take your situation to Jesus. I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care how ugly you look. I don't care how dirty, filthy, nasty, scummy, skeezy, slimy, snaky, disastrous, despicable you are. Take it to the Lord. Because deep down inside, all of us is jacked up. We all look good on Sunday morning. We all part our hair and comb it back, put the gel in, ponytail wrap on the back, trying to be slick, trying to be smart, got your weave tightened up a little bit, went out and got your fingernails did, nails did, toes did, everything did. You know how you do it, so that you can go in church Sunday morning and make everybody think you've been living right. Watch, 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 watch this, y'all, watch this, y'all. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Don't I look like I've been living right? Look, look at it. Don't I, don't I look like I've been living right? Don't I look like I've been living right? Yeah, this for y'all. This for y'all. I dressed up so that when I got here, I would look like I've been living right. Ain't nothing right about it. But only God knows who I was yesterday. Only God knows who I was Friday. Only God knows who I was Thursday. But He still let me preach. Still let me preach. So I'm telling you, whatever it is you're struggling with, whatever it is that's got you jacked up, whatever it is that's keeping you from going to Jesus and saying, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me, throw that in the trash, because that's nothing but the devil trying to keep you from going and getting your blessing, telling you that you're not worthy of another chance. None of us worthy. I got a degree. I know I'm supposed to say none of us are worthy. None of us worthy. None of us. You, me, they, us, they, Sister Flores ain't worthy, and Linda Hill ain't worthy. Y'all ain't praying with me. <laughs> I picked I pick the two nice, you know. You see, you notice know that? You notice know that? You know what I'm saying? I, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? I picked the two saintly ones. You know, the ones, the ones, you know what I'm saying? They ain't worthy. They ain't worried. None of them worried. 
But the enemy will tell you, Sister Torrance, don't take that to Jesus. You know, you done asked him for that five times already. This month. Am I right about it? I'm just a little bit right about it. We talk about the gravity. In verse 14, the Bible says, And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. Now, here's what you need to understand about this. That sounds like it's okay, don't it? Go show yourselves to the priests. Well, it's not okay. Because you're not supposed to go nowhere near the priests with lepers. And the law says, here you go, you are this now. The law says that once you get healed, then you go to the priest so that they can sign off on you. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. In other words, you go to the priest and you show them your leprosy and he, you know, he checks off, okay, looks like this ain't right, okay, looks like that's good, all right, oh, okay, hmm, let me see your arm, okay, all right. Open your mouth, ah, uh, okay. Let me see the bottom of your feet. Okay, all right, I'll sign off on that, that's a miracle. Go your way. That's the way that's supposed to go. Now watch this. But Jesus told them, go and show yourself to the priests while they were lepers. The Bible would have said they were not lepers, they were healed, they were done, and then Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. No. The, 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 Jesus had mercy on us. And the Bible says, and when he saw them, when he saw them, when he saw them, when he saw them, he, saw them he said, go show yourself to the priest. Oh, y'all ain't praying. Now keep in mind, this was a distance here. He didn't, he didn't touch them. They, the Bible says they were afar off. They still are far off. Hey, Jesus, son of Jesus, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. <laughs> Isn't that more, Andy? Now watch this. Now watch this, man. Watch this, man. Uh -uh. Watch this, man. Unlike Tammy. Um, he, uh, they, they went and left and went to get that. They got the gold. They didn't come back and say, they didn't say, excuse me, um, um, ain't I supposed to be, you know, I'm still white as snow. I'm still flaking. You know, I got dandruff on my arm. You know what I'm saying? I got elephant sized dandruff on my leg. And you telling me to go show myself, um, excuse me, I don't think the priest is going to be ready to see me in this condition. That's what Tammy would have said. But Maya went on and started heading toward where the priest was. Because she's spiritual, see. She's spiritual. She, she, ain't, she ain't worried about what it looked like. She, she connected with God, and she gonna go do what the man of God told her to do. Come on, Tammy up there fighting. I ain't doing it. Go show myself to the priest. Is you out your mind? I've been cussed out five times for being too close to somebody in the supermarket. <laughs> Y'all ain't praying with me. You tell me to go show myself to the priest. Don't forget, you don't go to the priest until after you are healed. Now look at God, but here's what I like about God. Look what happened. The Bible says, as they went, you see that? Look at that. Look at that. And it came to pass that as they went, oh, y'all ain't praying with me. See, their faith, they, they move by faith, not by sight. If you're walking by sight, I don't know what that is. You, you, you're missing a little faith. You're going to need some faith to walk by faith. You can't walk by sight and call it faith. You can't go by what's in the pocket. You got to go by what's in heaven. You can't go by what's in the bank. You got to go by what's in heaven. You can't go by what General Electric or AT&T says on your job. You got to go by what's in heaven. I know y'all downsizing. I know y'all cutting back. I know y'all firing people. I know y'all laying off. But I got a God that's more powerful than any God. And he's never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed made away. You might fire me, but I'm going to eat. You might get rid of me, but I'm going to live. You might quit me, but I'm going to go somewhere. You might divorce me, but I'm still going to have something. Because I'm not depending on what I see. I'm depending on what I know. And I know that Jesus Christ got me. As they were going, I, some of them, 
Watch out. 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 Watch Left back there because it got nothing to see. You dragging it along, and all of a sudden, bling, and you start walking, you're going to see the tree because you done got healed on the way. Y'all been cracking with me. I'm talking about the real deal. You ain't did nothing to get this. You ain't did nothing to get sober. You ain't did nothing to quit drugs. You ain't did nothing to quit whiskey. You ain't did nothing to stop smoking. You ain't did nothing to give up pookie. God cleansed you on the way. I said, oh, I wish I could see this on right now. I said, on the way, on the way. On the way, on the way, on the way to me. Ah, 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 Turned back and with he disobeyed God. <laughs> I ain't got no water. I ain't got no water. Oh, there you go. That's all. Look here. That's why I ain't been here in my name. No water. <laughs> well, y'all should have four bottles sitting up here. Anyway. <laughs> but watch this. But watch this. Man. Watch this, y'all. Look at this. Look at that. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, ah, he, look here. He said, Thank you, brother. Thank you. I, I'm going to have to cut y'all loose. Where y'all going? Y'all going down here and see that priest. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going back to where my change came from. <laughs> you know what I'm y'all going there. You going down there and do what Jesus told you to do now. He told you to go show yourself to the priest. Now y'all go ahead. But I got what I believe is a more important duty right now. Because what I was going to, to see the priest about has already taken place. So as far as I'm concerned, this thing I'm getting ready to do back here where I just came from is more important than going and getting validation from man. Amen. 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 I mean, I appreciate Pastor Tucker to say, yeah, that is really a miracle. Go that way. You have received a miracle from God. I appreciate that, but I don't need that. But I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going back here to that guy with the sandals on and the dude. I'm headed back there, dude, right there. Yeah, I'm going back there. I'm going to thank that boy for what he done for me. And it says here, it says here that when Jesus answered, watch this, he, they, one of them, watch this, cried and turned back with a loud voice and glorified God and fell down at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Which suggests to me that the nine other were Jews. And you know how people are when they feel privileged? You know, when you get a new car, you shout to the, to the highest, you know, you get some new furniture, you all happy, come on over and see my new sofa. You know, you get a big screen TV, you want everybody to come to the game is at my house now. You ain't been having no game at your house. And now you got a big 65, and you, you want everybody to come over and see how blessed you are. Well, that's good. But guess what? Y'all wasn't with me when I didn't have no TV. Matter of fact, you didn't invite me over to your house when you was watching your 45. People want to see you do better, but not better than them. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. So I said, this boy fell on his face. He was a Samaritan. Now, this is what Larry Tucker said. Larry Tucker said, probably, he probably thought to himself, they didn't want me up in their temple. Wow. When, when I had nothing to see, they didn't even put a speaker out in the parking lot so that I could hear the word. Not only did they not allow me in the temple, I saw a priest at the camel stop the other day, and he wouldn't even look my way. I got that wasn't even there. Y'all ain't praying with me. I saw another nigga filling up his donkey, and he wouldn't even speak to me. And he was a de he was a deacon down at that daggone church. And he want me to go over there and show my stuff to the priest. I got news for you. They ain't been wanting me in their presence. They ain't been asking me to come around. 
They didn't want me when I was back then. They ain't want me now. How they all want me? I wish I was my present. So they, yeah, y'all ain't want no pots of me when I was all jacked up. You ain't want no pots of me when I was on crack cocaine. You ain't want no pots of me when I was smoking the pipe. Y'all ain't want no pots of me when I was hooked on Mount Lyon and Johnny Walker Black and Tiger Ray Jin and Bud Light. Like you didn't want no pots of me. But now you want me to go down there and show myself to the who? I ain't got no words for him, really. Saw him at the ATM on a camel, he ain't say nothing to me. I was standing right there, broke, busted, disgusted, and flaked dandruff, like I said, that dandruff chunks this size on my shoulder, okay, falling off blue. He ain't had nothing to say. Now you want me, I'm just saying what Tucker, I'm not, I, I, not what the scriptures say, I'm just saying what Tucker would have said when you telling me, go show myself to the priest, and I'm already healed? For what? For what? <laughs> he just gonna ask me for a love off. <laughs> and he ain't did nothing. Y'all wow. ain't praying with me. I, 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 watch this. What part of me do you want me to show to the priest? Oh, 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 oh. oh, I'm going to show him, but he ain't going to like the part. I'm going to show him. Y'all ain't crazy. I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about you. I know you would have just went on down there and, you know, did what the man said. But but, but me, I'm, I'm, with this, I'm with this Samaritan boy right here, right now, right here, right now. I'm going back to where it came from, and I'm going to thank the one who blessed you and blessed you and blessed you. And, and to show you that I ain't by myself, Tammy, you know, watch this, Tammy, watch this. To show you that I'm not the only one who thought that, look at what Jesus said in verse 17. The gripe, the gripe, gripe, G-R-I-P-E. Jesus had a gripe. Jesus was feeling some kind of way. Jesus said, answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Since I'm in church, I'm going to say it like this. I think Jesus was urinated off. <laughs> I think so. I'm like, look, all y'all, 10 of y'all got here, and only one of you, just one, and he's a Samaritan. He's the only one came back to thank God for what he did. Can I help you? Look, stop the sermon. One of the best things you could do is be grateful. This morning, I put my little outfit together. And I came downstairs and I showed my wife this pink shirt. And the pink shirt had gray around here and down in the center. It was gray. I said, how do you think this looks, me? Eh, you don't have another shirt. I said, I'm trying to do the pink and blue thing. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to coordinate a little pink and blue. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, if you, yeah, you can wear it. I said, okay, I'll go in there. I ain't shirt. They got the approval. I got to hang the shirt up, and there's another shirt with blue and pink. Same cut, same hole, everything, but blue instead of gray. And I said to my wife, I said, you know, I am so grateful. How many people on the planet, you know what I mean, have t-shirts that very, very close in everything, Except one got a little gray thing and the other one got a little blue thing. You've got to be grateful. And do you want to know one of the reasons why I market I believe God gets me stuff? Because I'm faithful over a few things. I'm faithful over. He that is faithful in that which is much, little, will be faithful also in much. See what I said? When I had one church, I wore it to church. When it was either the pink one or not, I wore it to church. And when it was, when it was, well, I said, when it was the black shoes or the brown one, I wore it to church. 
You follow what I'm saying? Be grateful. Somebody, the old lady told me years ago, if all you got is a pair of roller skates, keep them oiled. And that is why I can go in the hospital and say, I mean, in, 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 in the class and say, any, meeny, miny, pink. If he holler, let him go. Why you got so much, I do not know. Y'all with me here? Because you're faithful over few. Whatever you got, whatever you got, whatever you got, whatever you got, give God, give glory to God, and be grateful for it. Be grateful for it. Be grateful for it. If you got a one-bedroom, hey, make the pay. <laughs> Are you with me here? I don't care what you got. Clean it up. Whatever you got. You got one pair of pants? Take them off. Wash them in the tub. Iron them and put them back on them all. Be grateful. Yes, sir. Ain't enough of us pink. Tiny ain't always had pink bands and lower that stuff. Pink dress. She actually stand up there now looking like she always had it like that. But Big Mama said, no, she didn't always have it like that. Because I had seven of them. Was it seven of them, Big Mama? Seven, you ain't had no seven pairs of hands, Big Mama. I'm sorry, you just didn't. But, ten, but, 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 but Tiny got her own bands now. She come in every week. She matches with pink, purple, blue, and green. Amen. Not only is she the right, but let's take a look at the grace. In verse 19, he said unto them, to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, that word whole don't look like much to you, does Let me tell you what that word whole is. That word whole comes from the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, sozo, which means salvation. That's very serendipitous of Jesus, wasn't it? I got what the boy, all he wanted to do was get rid of his lepers. Going to hell was another issue. All I came to do was if I could just get this dandruff off my the bottom of my feet. You with me here? If I could just get these flakes, and when those flakes fell off, the skin was raw and bloody. I, I, he just came to get rid of the lepers. But because he was grateful and not just thankful, he came back. He said, look, Jesus, the priest will be there when them other nine get finished with it. I'll go see him later. But right now, I'm coming back to the source of my deliverance. And I'm going to thank you, Jesus. He fell at Jesus' feet. And here's another thing. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. Here's another thing, here's another thing Smoke. Watch this, Smoke. Look, notice he didn't go nowhere near Jesus when he had lepers. He stayed far off. But he knew that his healing was so thorough that the Bible says he lay at Jesus' feet, touching his feet with his face to the ground, touching the rabbi. And five seconds ago, I was a leper. Oh, y'all ain't seeing it. So he knew for a fact that he had been healed. And he knew it was thorough. And he knew it wasn't just a partial heal. He knew that his back and his front and his head and his soul, everything was gone enough to touch Jesus and say thank you. And Jesus said, well, where the rest of them niggas go? Okay, I got that here. Heal everybody. You know, like Pastor Tucker sometimes. <laughs> you know how Pastor Tucker gets sometimes. <laughs> We're the only ones we helped. You know, you know what I mean? Where they at? And you know, well, I'm human. All right? The spiritual side said, we said, go on, y'all. <laughs> go on, y'all. Y'all keep on. You know, I said, I'm going to stand up. But there's another side to me we were like, Give me back my heart. <laughs> I know y'all don't like it when I'm just me. But that's all right. That's all right. So so I said, he said, go, I'm talking about the grace. Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And here's what the rumors say, the, the other books say, that this particular Samaritan became a priest. Now can you imagine? what kind of priest he was after having been a leper for all those years and see how the priest treated him. So now he gonna come at him from another angle because he knows how it feels to be an outcast. Yes sir, yes sir. See, see that's what happened to us. That's what happened to me and Johnny. Me and Johnny Clark, we know how it felt to be ostracized so bad that uh, when we got a chance to be the priest, when we got a chance to be the preacher, we coming from a different angle. 
leprosy. You ain't got leprosy to us. You got that same thing I had. And I know how they treat me out there. Are you with me? So in closing, I'd like to say that nine were thankful. But one was grateful. Thankful thanks mama for the turkey dinner that she just prepared. But grateful helps mama wash the dishes. Thankful thanks a person for the loan. But grateful pays it back on time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thankful knows how much something costs, but grateful knows how much it's worth. Yeah. Thankful gets saved, but grateful sticks around to get others saved. Thankful gets educated, but grateful educates others. Thankful gets blessed by the church. But grateful sticks around to bless someone else in the church. Thankful receives a scholarship from the church. But grateful shares that education with the church. Thankful gets sharp like iron. But grateful sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. It's a good thing that Jesus wasn't just thankful. If Jesus had been just thankful, he would have stayed up in heaven and been comfortable in the presence of his father. If Jesus had been thankful, he wouldn't have pressed his way through 42 generations just to save a wretch like me. If Jesus had been just thankful, he never would have agreed to go to Calvary. If Jesus had just been thankful, he never would have allowed them to crucify him. If Jesus had just been thankful, he never would have gone to the cross. If Jesus had been thankful, he never would have stayed in the grave for three long days. If Jesus had been just thankful, he never would have been resurrected on the third day. If Jesus had just been thankful, you and I would not be his sons and daughters today. Ask yourself, aren't I grateful? that Jesus was grateful? Because Jesus was grateful. I can now be grateful. I'm grateful because he suffered, bled, and died on the cross. I'm grateful because he stayed in the grave for three long days. I'm grateful because he got up on the third day. I'm grateful because he paid the price for your sins and mine. If you're grateful and you forgot to tell Jesus how grateful you are, stand up right now. Tell Jesus how grateful you are. Stand up right now and tell God how grateful you are. Apologize to God for not being as grateful as you should be. Tell God I'm sorry because I didn't recognize all the wonderful, great, and stupid things you did for me. Tell God I'm grateful, God. I'm grateful, God. I'm grateful, God. If you're grateful, tell him. Tell him that I'm grateful because you looked me out of my car and you saw my name. I'm grateful because you made that ultimate sacrifice for a sinner like me. I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Remember this. Thankful is what grateful does. That's how you are grateful.